Oh man. <laughs> Whew, well, I don't know where to start on this video, to be honest with you, man. Uh, I got my bed made. Um, getting ready to go to bed, go get me some sleep. Been up since like six this morning. And uh, it's 10, 10 o'clock now. <laughs> So, uh, I'm ready to get, get this day over with, get some rest. It could have been a lot worse than it was. So, last time we talked, uh, I was broke down the side of the road. Right now, I'm in Columbus, Georgia, uh, at the receiver, fixing to go to bed. They'll wake me up when they get here in the morning. <laughs> so, dang, Dougie. Uh, so here's what happened. Get you something to drink. Get ready for the show because I'm fixing to give it to you right now. <laughs> I'm sitting on roadside service and I'm, uh, last time we talked, Snorlord was going live. So I'm watching Snorlord, uh, Trucker Jukebox, he goes live. So I'm watching him on the other phone. And, um, uh, I asked Snorlord, I said, I got a question. And when will my service man be here? <laughs> Less than five minutes, he comes driving up behind me. I'm like, he's here! So he pulls up in front, turns on the bright lights, uh, gets out, young fella. Goes back there, looks around. He's like, push, uh, push you, release your brakes, you know, or, you know. So I push in the valve, psh, hear the air coming out. Right away he finds it, it's coming out your valve, regulates the air going to the brake chambers. Uh, the air is not going to the brake chambers to keep the brakes released so you can ride down the road, use your service brake and all that stuff. It's uh, it's just flooding out. But it wasn't flooding out so bad that the uh, uh, pressure in the tanks dropped below 100 pounds. They stayed above 100 pounds, so I was, it wasn't coming out that bad. It just wasn't pushing air to the brake chambers is, my, is what I understand. So uh, he goes, well, let me go call and see what we can do about this. I say, call? You don't know what to do? So he comes back later, he says, they told me just to try to bypass, put the, all the hoses together <laughs> and bypass the, the valve. And I'm thinking, if you could just bypass the valve, why is there even a valve? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, he takes all the hoses loose. Then he realizes he doesn't have the coupling to put the big hose that goes to the brake chamber to put it back together. So then he, then I finally convinced him. I said, hey man, I said, how about we put the hoses back on the valve? You back the brakes off so I don't have tractor drive brakes on the drive tires. I still got my brakes on my steer tires and I still got trailer brakes. That's enough to stop me. I'm only hauling about 10,000 pounds, really light load. Plus, I got my Jake brake. I know how to use a good. I know how to, I could probably just about stop with no brakes and just a Jake brake. I mean, I'm, I'm not. This ain't my first rodeo. So uh, he goes okay. So he proceeds to put the hoses back together. Why the fitting on the one big hose? I understand there's a fitting, and that fitting could slide around on the hose. So he holds on to that with the vice grips, and on the other part of the fitting is the uh, the uh, the nut part with the uh, the male part that goes in there, and you screw it in. Well, he's trying to hold it with the vice and get it started, and I'm like, why not just get it started with the hose and then put the vice on and then do the thing? That's what I'm thinking, but I can't see anything because I don't want to make him mad. Cause I'm on a time crunch. I'm looking at my ELD time, and I, I got I got to have at least 45 minutes when he gets done to be able to make it to where I to get it fixed, you know. Cause I've already talked to Landstar, and they said get to a safe haven. First place you come to, you got to stop do your break if you run out of hours before he gets you fixed. So um, I couldn't use personal conveyance, and I couldn't go all the way 40 miles to Earl. So. Oh, that's my beautiful wife calling me. I gotta talk to her. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Oh. 
Okay, as you can see in those clip uh, pictures of uh, what they had to replace on my truck to uh, to get it running, and uh, so I don't have any uh, more issues. I hope. Um, so get back to the story. He uh, he. So you saw the valve. That's where he was trying to screw the hoses in. So uh, finally, I had to tell him. Hey, man, you know, I got a water trough at the house, you know, for my dogs outside. And I said, it has a, a hose similar to this where you have to screw into something like that. I said, what I do is I wind the hose in the opposite direction and then I release it into the hole and it screws itself in part of the way, you know, and then I finish tightening it down. And uh, eventually he gave in and tried that and it worked on the one side. So then he gets to the other side, and he's still trying the thing with the vice grips, and uh, and it's not working. And so he starts winding it and trying it, and it's not working. And immediately, I know what the problem is. He's going lefty loosey when he should be going ratty tidy, right? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So uh, I, you know, I, I said it twice discreetly. I said, huh, that's one of those weird ones that goes in the opposite direction. It ain't a righty tighty or a lefty loosey. Trying to plant the seed in his mind so it'll be his idea. Maybe I should go the other direction. Finally, after five more minutes of him trying, he just one time gives it a try and boom, go right in. Woo! <laughs> Man, I was so proud of myself. I didn't yell, I didn't get upset, I stayed calm. I tried to think of how to uh, coach him into being able to do this. I mean, cause it's right there in the center of the, of the frame of the truck, you know, and he had to crawl down between there to get back up under there to undo the brakes, to back them off so we could, I could pull out. I couldn't have done that. I couldn't have got up under there and, um, back those brakes off it was just too close to the ground there wasn't enough space it was too tight and i'm too fat so finally he gets the bait brakes back down and i'm like good god i think it was ever gonna get done i'm looking at the clock i'm like shoot we gotta hurry up so he finally gets done and we got about an hour to get there so before my time ran out so is that oh that's a shadow i thought that was grease um so, uh, finally, I go get my triangles, get everything in the truck. We haul butt. He's following behind me. I guess he thinks I'm going to go run off somewhere. I'm going to the TA, brother, because I want to get my truck fixed. But there's good, there's there's hope <laughs> that you're not going to be the mechanic. All right. So, <laughs> so we get there, and uh, the lady on duty there, the front desk lady at the shop, She's like, we don't have that part in stock. We'll have to get it from Memphis, Tennessee. And um, so I said, okay. I said, what time would that be? She said, well, they open at 8 o'clock in the morning, and we have people that deliver parts and stuff like that. And I was like, okay. So I went back out to the truck and just kind of hung out, got some sleep. And um, you all right, Duck? You're breathing heavy, buddy. Um got up that morning went back in there around eight o'clock and she's like i told the other guy what you need and everything and he's trying to get it ordered now and i sat there for a little bit and i heard him on the phone and he called it in and um uh, then he called some delivery service people i guess they went by and picked it up anyway so i went back out to the truck and uh by now some parking spaces are opening up because i was parked like triple parked out there trying to find somewhere to stay out of the way because all the reserve parking was sold out. All the other spots were full. So there was people parked in front of the side of the scale over there on the other side. And if you've ever been to that TA in Earl, you know it's tight getting in and out of there. So um, I, 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 early that morning I saw some space over by the scale opened up. Oh no, actually a space next to where I was at opened up and I moved over closer to where they put the fuel in the uh the tankers pump fuel into the fuel tanks uh for the pumps out there um 
So eventually, you know, went in uh, head and uh, went back in. I said, hey, man, I said, uh, if it's going to be a little while before y'all get the parts here, I said, my truck needs to be serviced, oil change, fuel filters, oil filters, grease, lube, all that stuff. And uh, I said, um, could y'all do that for me while waiting on the parts? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead and just pull in the Bay 3. I said, I'm going to go ahead and drop the trailer to be a little easier on you, and I can grease my fifth wheel and everything, too, because I was basically trying to make it easy for him to get to that valve without that trailer being in the way. Um, so I dropped the trailer, came in, did the, did the service, and he said, just pull around to Bay 5, and uh, we'll get started. Your parts just got here. We'll get started on changing out the valve. So I did that, and I said, hey, man, while you're doing that, I'm going to walk my dog. I grabbed my airlock for my uh, airline on the trailer, went out there and put it on. Well, it was locked, so I had to unlock it and then put it on, you know. So put my keys back in my pocket, went over there with walking ducky around, uh, walked down to where the scale is and cut across there at the scale back over to the uh, to the bay and um, went and sat in the truck for a little while longer and um, played on the computer a little bit, doing some uh, video editing and stuff. And um, he goes, hey, man, we got it. I think we got it ready. He said, crank it up, build up some air pressure. Well, air pressure was still good at it, so I went in and crank it up anyway and uh, released it. No air leak. Everything's perfect. Sweet. Yes. Uh, just one little thing I need to tell you. Uh, uh, when I was under there, uh, you have a, a small leak in the seal on your uh, rear diff on your uh, front differential. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that good news. Uh, well, he told me that when they were servicing it. I think he said anyway. But he said he filled it up. I think it was a quart, maybe two quarts low, something like that. And um, so that's something I got to get done. It won't be at the, my regular mechanic because I called my regular mechanic because he had been talking about one of those air valve or air modules or something. So I called him to find out what he was going to replace exactly and see if it was that same one. You know, maybe he knew the part number and everything. We could, you know, because they had trouble getting the part number and everything too. Um, so I called him and he goes, well, let me call David and find out what, what it was he was going to replace. I guess that's one of his mechanics. And um, he never called me back. So... I left my truck there two different times. He never did one thing to it airtime. I call him. He To this minute, he has still not called me back. So I'm pretty sure he's done with me and I'm done with him. Why? I don't know. I did not do nothing to the man but pay him every time. He said, this is how much you owe me. Here's your money. You know, this is the work I need done if you can. And that, that's, that was the extent of it. So why he doesn't want my business... I don't know. But, I mean, there's other people that do. I got two other options in Tallahassee I'm going to look at and see uh, what I can do. So, But anyway, so we pull over there and everything, and he gets done. He, oh, great. Don't worry. He says, you can go on in there and pay for it, and then uh, you're done. He says, you can haul butt. So I go inside, pay for it. It's $1,237. Woo! I know that sounds like a lot, but you got to figure the full service service on the truck, you know, oil filter and all that stuff, plus the valve, plus the roadside, plus the, um, you know, every, the labor and everything. So I thought 1200 was about right. And um, so I paid it, went back, got in the truck, drove around and hooked to the trailer. Reaching my pocket to get my key to unlock the airlock valve. No keys. Keys are gone. They're not in my pocket. I was just like, dang, I can't believe I lost another set of keys. So I go back in the truck thinking maybe they fell out here while I was sitting in the seat or when I was sitting back there in the sleeper. And um, no keys. Lucky for me, I have a spare set. I use them to unlock it. Got hooked up to it. Pull forward and look for it. It wasn't there. And um, so I was like, damn. Went back inside thinking maybe I dropped them in there when I was getting stuff out of my pocket or whatever. They wasn't in there. So as I'm walking back out to the truck to get in it, to lead the head over here, I said, I'm going to give it one more try. I'm just going to walk the route that me and Ducky walked 
uh, coming in back to the shop. I start to walk across the scale. I look down. They're sitting there on the yellow line right next to where the scale, you know, doesn't touch the concrete. You know, it's a wonder it didn't fall down in that little groove or something, but they were laying right there on that yellow line. It's a miracle nobody drove over them either. And I, I saw them keys. I was like, yes! I reached down and grabbed the keys, picked them up. I was like, wing, 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 wing. yes, yes, yes. I was jumping around. I was so happy. And uh, not because of my truck key, because I have three truck keys, but only have two uh, air valve lock keys and the uh, the locks for the king pin that, that Landstar issues you. I one of them was on there. So I would have been down to one of those and one of the other. And then I would have dang sure had to watch out for losing my key. But uh, anyway, I got my keys back, and we hit the road, headed over here. And then I got to Birmingham and hit a bus saw with the daggum GPS and using Google Maps. I'm through with that crap. I'm going to buy me a, either a Garmin or a Ram McNally at the uh, truck stop. I got about $200 or so in points saved up, so I'll pay the rest of it and uh, go ahead and get that done. And... Um, get me a, a good GPS. I'm tired of that damn Google Maps. So anyway, that's where we're at. We're fixed, we hope. And uh, Duck Man's done run around and gave me a heart attack tonight. We were right here walking around the parking lot. I was checking out where I was going to back into, and he saw some people over there at that other building. He went off, took off over there, and I'm hollering, and I'm hollering, and I'm whistling, and he just and I take off running trying to catch him, and uh, he's gone. You know, and I'm like hollering, and finally, just before he got there to where they were at, he stopped and started coming back this way, and it was like he couldn't see me. It's like I was invisible, which I am not invisible. And uh, finally, he followed my voice, I guess, and came to me. It ain't that dark here, so I don't know. But anyway, so other than that, we're good. We're just parked here. They'll be here at 8 o'clock in the morning. We'll get unloaded, and... Um, Head on over to Macon, Georgia, for our second drop tomorrow. Get off my bed. Hey, off my bed, boy. That fart knocker back there on my bed. That ain't your bed. No, that's not your bed. So, anyway, um, yeah, we get that drop off in Macon. And if I don't start my 14 hour clock until I'm done here, and I'm getting ready to hit the road, then um, I should have enough time to go to Macon, get unloaded, and then go on up to Fayetteville for our third drop. Um, I dread it because you got to go through those backwoods of Georgia, cutting through like Milledgeville and Augusta and on across. There's no interstate. It's just back roads all the way through there because uh, all the interstates like I-16 goes this way, Macon down to Savannah. I-20 goes like... Um, Augusta cross over, you know, towards Birmingham. Uh, I-75 goes Valdosta straight up to Atlanta. And then um, I-85, you know, of course, Atlanta back down to Montgomery. There's no interstate that goes from, like, Macon up towards North Carolina, South Carolina, or in, and then that direction. So it is what it is. You just got to take the back roads. I've done it so many times, I know them by heart now. But anyway, that's it. We're back rolling again. We're going to get some sleep. I hope y'all, hope y'all, <laughs> hope y'all had a better day than I did. You know, uh, but I wasn't the only one. Some of the other guys I talked to, Pale Rider, Blackbeard, they both had bad days the last couple of days, too, so. Oh, I think mine was the most expensive. <laughs> but anyway, we, uh, we're back in the saddle again. We're rolling. We're fixed for now. So let's get it going. We got our loads. Oh, I didn't tell you. We got our loads booked. We're going to pick up in Charlotte. Uh, when we get done in Fayetteville, we're going to pick up in Charlotte and head back to the house yep yeah. yep gonna be home this weekend um charlotte to uh tick for i guess that's how you said t-i-c-k-f-a-w louisiana 
just barely a little bit north of Hammond, which is on I-12, which spurs off of 10. I live off of I-10, so I'm just going to run down from Charlotte, 10 across to the house, uh, spend Friday night, Saturday night at the house. Boom, 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 34-hour reset, sweet, sweet. And uh, leave out Sunday and drive over to Hammond. Uh, I'll look and see if I can stay in Tickfall if I can, I will. And um, then uh, Jennings, Louisiana, and uh, get unloaded there. Kick back and relax. Ease on over to West Lake, Louisiana, and pick up there going to Laredo. But it doesn't pick up until Tuesday. And delivers in Laredo on Wednesday, the 3rd of July. So right now I'm trying to find something out of Laredo. I can run, pick up on the 3rd and deliver on the 5th. Something with maybe about 1,000 miles that pays really good. You know, so that's what I'm hoping. So we'll see. Anyway, I got to cut this thing off, man. We're already over 16 minutes. If you're an operator, don't haul no cheap freight. All right. Peace out. Y'all have a great night.